You may be seated. My name is Chris. I'm the executive pastor here at Cross Assembly. On behalf of our lead pastor and our staff and other pastors, as well as the city of Raleigh itself and the straight state of North Carolina, thank you for being here today. Beloved, we are here to honor and celebrate the life of Gabriel Gabe Jesus Torres, who came into this life on Thursday, March 4th, 1993, and passed out of it on a Thursday, October 13th, 2022. He is survived by his loving wife, Jasmine, and his precious and very busy, by the way, Jasmine, daughter, Layla, as well as his mom, Maritza, and dad, Carlos, and his older brother, Josh, and his younger sister, Giselle, and of course, though he's not here, his sidekick, Benji. While this may be a difficult day, it is also a day to remember and celebrate the life that Officer Torres Gabe lived and to honor him on this day. This is why we are gathered, and this is what we intend to do. When King David in the Old Testament wanted to describe the relationship between God and man, when he wanted to describe the way he felt that God dealt with him, being a shepherd himself, he wrote Psalm 23, and he said this, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is what we're walking through today, he said, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness... And mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus at the Last Supper was trying to comfort in advance his inner circle, and he said this to them in John 16, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world... You will have tribulation. You will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world through his death and resurrection. In fact, he did that. Would you pray with me? Lord, as we've just read, you said that in this life we would have trouble, that we should take heart for you have overcome the world. And Lord, we've experienced some trouble this week. And today, as we honor and celebrate the life of Officer Gabriel Gabe Jesus Torres, we ask, Father, that your peace would be present in the midst of the pain and your comfort would be with us in the midst of the sorrow. Lord, we have more questions than answers, but we trust that even in this tragedy that you would make your presence known especially to Gabe's family and friends as they mourn his passing. May this service be an act of worship unto you, Lord, and a reflection of your love. It may it properly honor the man whose life we are celebrating today, Gabe Torres. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, the name that Gabe often spoke of, the name of the one who bled and died for our sins, that we could be forgiven and have the hope of eternity made real in our lives. It's in this name, the name of Jesus, that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. If you know this song, please feel free to sing along.
Good afternoon. 
I stand before you humbly, giving honor unto God, who is the head of my life and the keeper of my soul. I thank you for the life of our precious brother, Gabriel Torres, to Jasmine and Layla and the entire Torres family, the city of Raleigh, the Raleigh Police Department, and the residents of our community extend our heartfelt condolences to you on the passing of a true hero. A hero who departed this life doing what he loved so dearly, protecting others. And while we are mourning with you in this season, we're also celebrating with the angels knowing that heaven has ushered in yet again another guardian. Officer Gabriel Torres joined the Raleigh Police Department on March 22nd, 2021, and served until October 13th, 2022. As we celebrate his life today, I am taken back to November 4th, 2021, at the graduation of the 123rd recruit class. It was my first class graduation as the new chief in Raleigh, and it was particularly significant for me because I too had graduated from the 123rd recruit class of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department 25 years earlier. And for all those who were born in the 2000s, yes, I'm old. I remember looking at the recruits as they stood at attention and keying in on recruit Torres and feeling extreme pride in how he presented himself. He was sharp from head to toe. He had a fresh cut. I'm told that if he didn't have anything, he always had a fresh cut. His jacket was tailored, his tie straight, badge polished, slacks at the proper length, dry cleaned with a straight crease. Shoes were well polished. He stood tall, shoulders back, chin up and eyes forward, proud and strong, a direct representation of our great organization and our profession. I would learn from talking to his classmates and instructors, squad members and supervisors, that what he displayed on the outside was a direct reflection of what he exemplified on the inside. And with as much effort as he took in making sure he represented himself and the RPD well, outwardly, he expended greater effort in encouraging others to be the authenticity of their best self inwardly. Officer Torres was a servant leader a role model, a great example, always finding the good in any situation as a motivation to others. He cared deeply about those around him and pushed everyone he touched to do their best. He refused to leave another one behind, even if it meant extra laps, extra deadlifts, or extra burpees. God bless him. In between calls, when he had downtime, he would phone classmates on other squads just to check in on them, always making sure that they and their families were okay. I'm told he always had an extra something on hand, whether it was a pair of socks, a t-shirt, an extra flashlight, or an extra few dollars to share if someone was in need. He was seldom in a bad mood, and if by chance he was, his outlook was tomorrow will be a better day. His positivity was infectious. Though he had a quiet disposition, I'm told that he was a jokester, keeping the air light, making wisecracks on the sly, all in good humor. He was proud of his heritage, showing up to work at the academy with his Spanish music bumping and teaching everybody around him a little Espanol. He was unapologetic for being a diehard New York Jets fan. That's the one area he and I did not disagree. Agree. Perhaps what echoed most audibly about Officer Torres was his love for his family. Jasmine and Layla, you held a special place in his heart. His greatest joys were showing his coworkers pictures of Layla and telling them what a great wife and mother you are, Jasmine. Cooking dinner for you before going to the night shift was the highlight of his entire day. The person Officer Torres was and the life he lived as a husband, father, son, Marine, and officer of our great city reflects highly on the badge he wore and the one we cherish. He has left an example to each of us of what the world needs more of, not those running away from the challenges 
of the profession and the inherent dangers associated with this work, but those running in, protecting against the forces that prey and hate, those that divide and destroy. Officer Torres answered the call given in Isaiah 6 and 8, which states, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. To our brother, thank you for answering the call. Moreover, thank you for the courage to go beyond the call. We honor your sacrifice. And now we say to you, rest easy. Your brothers and sisters in this sea of blue and black will take it from here. To Jasmine and Layla, thank you for sharing Officer Torres with us for the time that we had him. We love you and we stand with you now and always. God bless you, God bless our city, and God bless our country. When he rose up his sleeves, the angels putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There is lightning in his footsteps and lightning in his fists. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God. He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. in the void of the night our god is an awesome god he spoke into the darkness and created the light our god is an awesome god judgment and wrath he poured out in sodom mercy and grace he gave us at the cross i hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our god is an awesome god our god is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God.
before before I start, I'd like to thank, I'd like to personally thank every single person in this room, those lining the streets, those turning, those tuning in from near and far, those on duty, emergency personnel, those who prayed and continue to pray, those who have nurtured our bodies and our souls this past week. family and friends who traveled from all over to be here, my neighbors, my community, the city, the state, the nation, and even worlds away. Officer Sandy, Captain Harrison, who have been my personal angels on earth. The entire Raleigh Police Department and all other agencies. The Northwest District, Mitchells, Cross Assembly. There aren't enough thank yous. There aren't. My Gabriel, we were no strangers of distance. Our story revolved around distance. Every chapter of our lives together brought us distance. But this distance, this new distance, this one I will struggle with for the rest of my life. Yeah. In September of 2014, we first met and started dating. We lived an hour away from each other. We drive almost every day or every other day. Newark, New Jersey, to Jackson, New Jersey, and vice versa. We loved each other with towns and cities between us. It was a challenge, a challenge it was, but we got through it. In 2016, two years into dating, you shared with me how you wanted more for your life. You wanted to be able, you wanted to be, you wanted something to be proud of. You wanted to be able to provide for me and a future family. You joined the Marine Corps. We continued to love each other from states away. A challenge that was but we got through it. Two years later, on June 2nd, 2018, we got married and that meant we could finally be together. Quick, I quickly packed up all my things and moved to Jacksonville, North Carolina. What I didn't know is just two months into living Together, you would have to go away for some NATO training exercise that would last two months. Again, we got through it. Some months later, early April of 2019, you deployed. Again, we got through it. In August, 2020, two years into our marriage, we had a beautiful baby girl, Layla. Okay. Oh, 
I cannot thank you enough for giving me the opportunity to be a mommy. You are the best daddy. We became new parents during a pandemic. in a separate state from all our loved ones, just us three. But we got through it. In March of 2021, our story brought us to Raleigh, North Carolina, where you worked diligently to become a police officer and you did it. And I am so, so, so proud of you. You were so dedicated to your work. I had to beg you to use your time off. Your night shifts were hard. It created distance. But we got through it. Thursday, October 13th, 2022, is by far the hardest day of my life. Finding you wounded with your life slipping away is a pain too hard to deal with. Those cracks, those cracks that I heard as I was rounding the corner did not make sense at first. Oh, but I shortly learned what transpired. <sighs> I tried to save you. <sighs> oh, I wish, I wish I could have saved. I gave, I gave my all to try and save you. I'm sorry if I scared you. I didn't know I could scream that loud. I didn't know what I was capable of in order to try and save the life of someone I loved. <sighs> I don't know where that strength came from. I'm glad. I'm glad you were still with me long enough so that I can kiss your skin while it was still warm. <sighs> while I could still feel the pulse of your heart. I hope you heard me. I hope you heard me when I told you I loved you. <laughs> You'll forever be missed. I'll forever yearn for your touch. It's not okay. But eventually, 
I'll get through it. Don't worry about us. Be in peace. Our family down here is much larger than I'd ever have guessed. You'd be so amazed. I love you. I really love you. <laughs> we'll get through this. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. We stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. Right now. Say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing, a little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains up. I know you're able, I know you can. I know you're able, and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. And even if you don't, my hope is you.
You know, I wish that being a follower of Christ meant that you didn't have pain. I wish that being a follower of Jesus meant that you had no suffering. And I wish that being a follower of Christ, especially as a pastor, meant that I always knew the answers. But I don't. I do know this. I know the Lord is hurting along with us here today. And I also want you to know that every song we've sung was Jasmine's choice. She asked for those songs. And Jasmine, you've done very well. And I'm very proud of you. And I know that there are better days ahead beyond these dark days. And God's going to give you the strength for those days. I'm going to open up in, a word in, a, in this message, but I just need to pray for a moment. Father, I thank you that you're still good even when things go bad. I ask you to comfort Jasmine in the years to come, comfort Layla when she begins to understand. And be with this family and be with these officers and be with this city and be with this state, we pray, and with our country as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Who is Gabe Torres? I didn't know him personally. I wish I had. He was, among many things, a committed husband to Jasmine. I asked her when I met her, I said, man, he had a great smile. He was a good-looking guy. Is that the first thing you noticed? And she, she said, no. She said the first thing she noticed was his heart to serve. And then she noticed he was good-looking. Gabe was a loving father to Layla. There's a great video that Jasmine showed me of him. I think Layla was holding like a popsicle or something like that. And she was trying to eat it and he wouldn't let her get to it. And there was like this battle and she was giggling. And you could just see, even in that 30 second video, how much he loved being a father. He was a son to Carlos and Maritza, and a son in law to Manny and Adelia, and a stepson to Christina and to Angel. He was a brother to Joss and Giselle and a brother-in-law to Manny Jr. and Damien. He was a grandson to Juan and, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, so I'm sorry, Leonidas Torres and Ephraim Cortez and Christina Cuevas. He was a cousin and a relative to I don't know how many, to be honest with you, because every time I hang out with his family, there's more of you. He was a Marine sergeant who probably served his country his military awards included a Good Conduct Medal, a National Defense Service Medal, a Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, a Humanitarian Service Medal, I'm really trying to give him a run for his money right now, and a Sea Service Deployment Ribbon. His military occupancy specialty was an electrician. I actually grew up doing electrical work myself, although his dad told me he really wasn't handy at home with electrical work after all, anyway. His last assignment was at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina. He volunteered to serve the people of Puerto Rico after the devastating effects of Hurricane Maria ravaged the island, where for a time he went without electricity and showered in a river, or bathed in a river, whatever those were, visited with his relatives. He was a law enforcement officer with the Raleigh Police Department, a man who was humble and selfless from all accounts that I've been told, a person that was great with kids. A guy, according to his mom and dad, who hated school and liked to sleep in when he was younger. Maritza told me a story about an epic battle between her and Gabe trying to get him out of bed where she was pulling the blankets one way and he was pulling them another way. He was a fan of the New York Knicks. Not everybody can be perfect. <laughs> and the Jets, again to my point. A native of New Jersey, a Jackson, I believe, a video game player, a big TV, TV watcher, a best friend to his dog, Benji, that I think Jasmine resents that dog a little bit because she said, I went and got that dog and picked it up, and that dog doesn't even like me anymore. It just likes Gabe. <laughs> and made with a great smile, and his father told me, with a very small head. <laughs> Going to pee head. Right? It's not my words. It was dad's words. 
A laid-back person who was quiet and serious with people he had not met until he got to know them and then would unleash his personality. A selfish and humble individual who thought of others first. A Christian who often spoke of Jesus and sang worship songs. This is who Gabe Torres was. And in these few short words, there is much more that he was that time will not permit. But the next question I'd like to talk about is where is he now? Because he's not here. Jesus said something interesting once to the sister of a man who had died, Lazarus. And she was overwrought with grief. And he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? You see, in Christian theology, in Christian doctrine, in the word of God, there's this thought that, that real death is to pass without God. That those who know Jesus, know the Father, pass from this life to the next. It was once said of Billy Graham that he said, one day you'll hear that I have died but he said, don't you believe it? I will be more alive than I have ever been. Gabe, according to that truth that's in the scripture, is more alive than he's ever been. Jesus, trying to pre-comfort his followers on the night of his betrayal, said this. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. That's the house that Gabe's in now. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas, being very practical, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going or how to get there. Jesus said to him, Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father, he said. From now on, you do know him and have seen him because they'd seen Jesus. Where is he now? I believe according to the stories I heard of Gabe's faith, he's in his Father's house. He's in eternity with the Lord. Because those who put their trust in Christ as their Lord or leader of their life and Savior, forgiver, have eternal life. And God's plan is that everyone should go to heaven. How did he get there? Did he get there by being a good person? Well, no, because the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. I'm not good and you're not good and Gabe wasn't good either because a standard that God has is a standard of perfection. He got there by grace. If you took the word grace, G-R-A-C-E, you could have an, an acronym and it would say this, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. You see, you and I are sinners. If you're looking for the biggest sinner in the room, it's the one talking right now. How did he get there? He got there by grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. In Romans, it says this. They call it the Romans road. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all in the same boat. And then it says in Romans 6, for the wages of sin is death. Doing things not God's way, the wages is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then it goes on to say this, that God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How did he get there? He got there by grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. You see, God loves people. Years ago, you know, I'm married. I have... Three killed children, and one of the basic rules of parenting is don't lose your kids. Would we agree on that one? And uh, I was shopping with my wife years ago, and I had my two-year-old daughter, Olivia, who's now a junior at college in Lynchburg, Virginia, that keeps taking all my money. And I lost her. She turned a corner, and I remember in an instant 
the panic that went through my mind. And then the second thought was, my wife's going to kill me, which she did. So I started running through the store, yelling my daughter's name out. Well, it turns out she had just gone around the corner. In my panic, I had run the wrong way. But in an instant, it was interesting. I immediately thought, I'm going to go to the front of the store. I'm going to ask them to lock the doors. I'm going to call the police, and nobody's leaving until I find my daughter. Why do I tell you that story? Because when I found my daughter, I heard the Spirit of God speak to me and say, Chris, you know that panic you feel about losing your daughter, Olivia? He said, that's how I feel about people who don't know me. God loves people. They matter to him. And that's why he sent his son to pay the price for our sin. How did he get there? He got there by God's grace. Now, here's a hard one. Why did God let it happen? I don't know. I know there's a very little of life that we actually control. The older I get, the more true that becomes. C.S. Lewis said that the problem of pain is inescapable. Its effects profound. No one can deny it. Many use it as a way to remove God from reality. It fuels the flame of doubt and sometimes undermines the believer's faith. It empowers the atheist's argument. To be a follower of Christ and to live in the world, one must determinedly, intentionally face the issues and difficulties that lie inherent and obvious in the problem of pain. He went on to say that God cannot grant free will to humanity and not grant free will at the same time, all the time, and in the same way to everyone or else we would not have free will. When I go through situations like this, I think of a quote from C.S. Lewis. He said, we are not in these challenging moments necessarily doubting that God will do the best for us. We are wondering how painful the best will turn out to be. Why did God let this atrocity happen? I don't know. What I do know is this. God is completely good. He is completely powerful and just. And pain and suffering exist. Maybe a better question is, is this life all there is? Because the word of God says that when we get to eternity, there will be no weeping or mourning, no shedding of tears. And that God will make all the injustices right. What's happened here is an injustice. And Jasmine, I don't understand it, and I wish that Gabe was still with us. But I do know this, that even despite this, God's still good, and he's going to carry you through this. Will we see him again? That's a good question. When my grandmother passed away many years ago, it was 1991, I was a sophomore in college. She was a godly woman named Vivian Weller, stood about shoulder height to me, started a Christian school in upstate New York. It's where I get this lovely nasal tone voice from. I'm one of those Yankees ruining the South, I know. 95 goes both ways, I've heard it all. And no, I don't live in the country area of relocated Yankees, although I do have family that does. <laughs> but I remember her passing with vividness. And I remember knowing that I would see my grandmother again. Because my grandmother had placed her faith in Christ. So if you know Christ, yes, you will see Gabe again because I believe that he knew Christ. To the family, I'd like to say this. It hurts so much because you love Gabe so much as he loved you. I pray that the Lord will hold the memories of Gabe close to your heart and know that through Jesus, this is not goodbye forever, but just for now. To Jasmine and Layla, on behalf of a grieving city, we are sorry for your loss. We love you, and we are praying God's grace and peace and strength for you both. To Carlos and Maritza, Joss and Giselle, Manny and Adelia, Manny Jr., Damien, Angel Christina, and to the, all of the family and friends of Gabe, Words do not suffice to bring the comfort our hearts would so desire. We as a community are sorry for your loss. We love you. And we are praying for God's grace 
and peace and strength for you all.
If you would please remain standing. Let's pray. Dear Lord, you are the Father of all mercies, who cares for all your people with an everlasting love. You are the God of all comfort, who consoles all those that are suffering the death of a loved one. You are the God of all peace, who has promised to pour your perfect peace into the hearts of your children who are going through the pain and suffering that the loss of a precious loved one brings. Lord, I pray for Gabe's family and friends that you would become their strength in this time of loss, their hope in this time of bereavement, their joy in this time of sorrow, and their perfect peace in the turmoil that their hearts must be facing. Thank you that the sting of death has been broken forever and the curse of the grave has been destroyed through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was broken forever, who has broken forever the power of death and hell for all who trust in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Lord, I ask that you would speak into the hearts of all your children that are mourning the loss of Gabe, and let them not mourn as those that have no hope. But Lord, for those that do not yet know you as the Savior who died for them, so that by believing they might have everlasting life, we pray that they will come to know and accept you as their Savior and find their perfect rest in you like Gabe did. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said... If you'll please remain standing for the end of watch call, and then after that we will wait for the Raleigh police to move into formation and escort Officer Torres and his family out of the sanctuary. to David 114 Raleigh to David 114 Raleigh calling David 114 Officer Gabriel Torres This is the last call for David 114 We thank you for your dedication loyalty and exemplary service to the Raleigh Police Department the citizens of Raleigh, and the United States of America. You have made those you served and your family proud. Although you are gone, you will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, our brother. End of watch, Thursday, October 13th, 2022.